Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and in this video, I'm going to share with you some tips for drawing stuff in 3D. Now, I don't intend for this to be a art lesson or anything like that. My channel is all about helping people who are learning math or teaching math. So it's more for folks who are interested in improving their sketches in 3D. You know, maybe you just started taking a multivariable calculus class this semester and your teacher's asking you to sketch all these surfaces or whatever, or you just want to get better at it. Or if you just think it's fun, then I'm going to show you a few little things that I've picked up over the past few years that I think really help make your sketches better. Okay, but before we jump into sketching anything, let's talk for a second. Because we should really talk about like, why is sketching in 3D so hard? Like what, like what's the tough part? Well, it's because we're trying to take something three-dimensional, something that takes up like three-dimensional space and flatten it onto a 2D screen. And so like you're inherently losing a dimension of information when you do that. And so the trick when you're sketching is conveying depth. Pretty much all of my tips for today are like little extra nuggets to add to your sketches that will help you show, you know, when a when two lines cross, which one is in front of the other, or when a curve passes behind a surface, how you can denote that. That's what we'll get into. So, okay, that's enough introduction. Let's get into it. So my first tip for you is when it comes to drawing planes that are parallel to one of the coordinate planes in your 3D axes, there's a way to draw it that really makes it look like it fits in the picture. But let me show you what I mean. So here are my 3D axes. And if I wanna draw the plane Y equals five, well, I know that'll be a plane that should intersect the Y axis at five. I haven't marked units, but like, if, like say that's here. And so you might say like, why don't we just draw a rectangle that is like sort of centered around this point sort of like this. And this is okay, it's not terrible, but it's hard to see that this like rectangle that you've drawn here is actually in a plane that is parallel to the XZ plane. So tip number one is actually when you're drawing planes like this, to draw them so that their edges are parallel to the axes that you've drawn. Let me show you what I mean. Instead of drawing this sort of oblique rectangle, I'll draw it so that it's a rectangle whose vertical sides are parallel to the Z axis and whose horizontal sides are parallel to the x-axis. So I just find a picture like this so much more convincing to me that like this rectangle that I've drawn here is actually lying in a plane that is parallel to the xz plane because the edges here are parallel to the axes. So there you go. Whenever you're drawing a plane that is parallel to one of the coordinate planes, draw it as a, I guess in this case, a parallelogram whose edges are parallel to the axes. So we've got our picture here of the plane y equals five, and it turns out we can improve it a little bit because for instance, it's it's a plane, right? If it were something that was made out of like a sheet of paper or metal, like we wouldn't actually be able to see through it. So really we shouldn't be drawing the part of the y axis that is behind the plane. And one way to do that would just to be like to erase the y axis that's behind the plane. And that's fine. but. Sometimes we'll want to keep track of curves that are behind other objects. So that's tip number two. When you're drawing either a line or a curve that goes behind a surface, it's best to draw it as a dotted line like this. It's sort of a way of showing that this line is still here, but we're acknowledging that it is behind the plane. And I'll note that it's behind the plane until it reaches this point where the y-axis hits the plane y equals five. Then after that, the y-axis is in front of the plane. And actually, that leads us to tip number three, because check out what's going on right here where this edge of the plane runs over the y-axis. In our 3D picture, the y-axis is actually closer to our eye than the back edge of this rectangle. So I'm gonna redo this part of the picture. I'll erase what's going on here. And I'm gonna draw it so that the y-axis is an unbroken line. and that back edge of the plane has a break in it where it passes behind the y-axis. So now if we look at our whole picture of this piece of a plane here, we can really start to see the depth that's going on. We can see that the y-axis goes behind this plane and then, and then pulls out in front of it, and it's really easy to see what's going on here. Even if we didn't use color, we can still sort of tell that this part of the rectangle is behind the y-axis. Tip number four and sort of tip number five are about drawing things that are round. So let's say that we want to draw a sphere, something like that, like a, the peel of a grapefruit or the outside of a basketball, something like that. 
if we were to just draw a circle, then it's sort of hard to say like, what is this meant to represent? Is it a flat disc that we're looking at head on? Or is it like actually a circle? Is it just like a, a loop of string? Or is it a sphere and this blue curve is the outline of it? If we wanted to designate it as a sphere, we're gonna give it what I call a belt. And what I mean by that is really for this, if we wanna make this a sphere, we'll draw in a kind of flattened circle that looks like the equator. And this is, so this is the equator of the sphere going around the front. And remember from tip number two, if we wanna show it going around the back, we should draw it as a dotted line. And this is a pretty common way that you'll see people draw things like spheres, you could also draw uh, something like a paraboloid or a cup in the same way and give it a belt to indicate it's like round here. Or if you wanted to draw something like a hyperboloid or you know something that looks like an hourglass shape, you would start with the sides, draw a loop for the top, draw a belt around the middle, and then draw sort of a belt for the bottom. Like when you do this for your surface, but for the surfaces that you draw, it really helps enforce a perspective, especially if you are careful about when you make your lines dotted in the back versus not. Because if we interpret dotted lines as things that are behind and solid lines as things that are, are in front, then it becomes a little bit more clear that we are looking at this cup, this green cup here, sort of like slightly from the top. So like this stuff in here is the inside of the cup and we're looking at it from above. Okay, tip number five is my favorite. It actually sort of blew my mind when someone suggested it to me a few years ago. Tip number five is draw your axes last. And actually this isn't even a 3D sketching tip. This is a 2D or a 3D sketching tip. Cause maybe you've been in a situation like this where you need to draw uh, say a circle centered at the origin in a plane. Well, this is how I used to do it. I draw these axes first and then I would try to draw a circle whose, whose radius is like here from the origin to here. I want it to be centered at the origin. So maybe I would try to do something like this. And like, yeah, it comes out kind of like weird and oblong and like, you know, it's kind of squished on the left hand side here. It's like a little bit boxy. So when I say draw axes last, what I mean is let's draw this same picture by drawing the circle first. because I just find it so much easier to draw a nice looking circle when there's not anything to have to like fit it into. And then after that, I can come in and draw the axes so that the center of the coordinate system is in the middle of the circle rather than before where you had to draw the circle so that its center is at this predefined point. It'll make all of your pictures of things that need to look symmetric with respect to axes look a lot better. And so to kind of bring everything together, let's draw a picture of a sphere centered at the origin in three-dimensional space. So we're gonna draw the axes last, meaning we'll draw the sphere first. To do that, we'll draw this circle. And then we'll give the circle a belt to make it actually look like a sphere. And then we can draw in the axes. And going back to tips, numbers two and three, let's draw the axes. Since they are inside the sphere, we'd wanna draw them as dotted lines until they get out of the sphere. Which might require a little bit of judgment from you as to like where this gets out of the sphere, but maybe it's here. And then we can go and quickly erase right at the top here to show that the z-axis actually goes in front of the top edge of the sphere. And there we go, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so a quick review. We first talked about drawing planes that are parallel to coordinate planes. Uh, remember, you want the edges to be parallel to the axes. And then dotted lines for curves that are behind surfaces. Broken lines to show when two things uh, overlap each other. You can show that things are round by giving them belts. And lastly, and definitely not leastly, draw your axes last. And before I go, I'll just add that this kind of thing is something that takes a lot of practice. You're building a connection between your brain, like a picture that you have in your brain, and something that your hand is doing on a piece of paper. And it'll take a while to get used to. But even in this video, you know, you might have seen me do everything like pretty well as I was talking about it. But in reality, this video took me about 45 minutes to shoot because I had to 
because I kept redoing everything until I got it the way I liked it. Um, this kind of thing takes a lot of iteration. So I'll encourage you to get out there and practice. And if you're looking for a way to practice, something you could do is just draw or redraw the pictures that you've produced for your homework assignments if you're taking a class that involves drawing these things. Another option for practice is just to open up a multivariable calculus textbook or find one on the internet and find the chapter where it talks about surfaces and just try to draw them. Now, this isn't like a super important skill when you're learning multivariable calculus, but it'll help you start building that brain to hand connection that I was talking about. So there we have it. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you got something out of it. If you have uh, your own favorite drawing tip that you want to share, leave it down in the comments. Or if you have something else that you're trying to figure out how to draw in one of your classes and you can't quite get it to work, let me know in the comments and maybe that could be a future video. And lastly, if you found this video useful, you could do me a favor by leaving a like or by sharing it with someone who you think would also find it useful. So thanks so much for playing along. I'll see you in the next video.